When the Creality K1 was released in early 2023, it was kind of bad. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but they did fix a lot about it really quickly, like in a couple of months. And I put out a review that I'm proud to say still holds up. Well, with some price changes. If you're looking for a new 3D printer or maybe a used one you found, well, this just might be what you're looking for. Just make sure if it's used that it has all the fixes and upgrades. So let's dig into my review of the Creality K1 Speedy 3D printer. And yes, that's the full name Creality gave it, not me. As we open up my 3D Print Labs video vault. Is it worth your time and money? Let's take a look. First up, let's dig into the specs. While it seems like everybody out there is racing to be the fastest and the cheapest 3D printer, unless you get the rest of it right, speed and price doesn't really matter. It's a Core XY machine with a max speed of 600 millimeters a second and with an acceleration speed of 20,000 millimeters a second squared, the K1 has the ability to jump to max speed in only 0.03 seconds and that allows it to print as fast as possible for around 90% of the time. A unibody die cast frame coupled with a nice looking enclosure provides a solid base for the G sensor, which solves a lot of ringing issues people have with 3D prints. My only real problem with the enclosure is that when I'm viewing the camera, I can see right through the side and my computer is visible. While this might not be an issue for you, it's just worth noting because you might need to change the location of your printer. An easy one-tap self-test goes along with the hands-free auto-leveling to try to give you the best prints possible. Most filaments work great with the 32 millimeter cube per second max flow hot end, and that has a ceramic heater that allows printing it up to 200 degrees Celsius. It comes with a high precision flexible build plate and an auxiliary fan that does not have a filter on it, so you'll need to have a proper exhaust plan before printing ABS and other filaments like that. And should your power flicker or go out, as I've had happen a few times, the resume printing function works flawlessly. Early on, they offered an upgrade kit with a camera and a few other add-ons. The kit was only a few bucks, and I think it was in response to a number of issues they had with the machine. All of the current cells of the K1 have fixed their problems with the exception of the camera, which still is an optional add-on for around 30 bucks. The quality is HD with the ability to do time lapses. And getting to the time lapses is cumbersome. Every single file has to be downloaded and deleted one at a time, and regardless of how many files you export, you have to enter the path to your folder each time. Same goes for the onboard controller using a USB drive, just one file at a time. And if you can find it in the app, it's pretty much the same, although at least there you have a batch delete so you can get rid of all the files at one time if you're running low on space. One of the biggest early problems was the drag chain sliding over the top of the extruder and flipping that switch that disengages the gears. And that's one of the reasons for the new extruder in the upgrade kit but they also implemented a fix that honestly should have been caught early on. They just reversed the direction the drag chain flexes. So now instead of flexing inward and flipping the switch, it flips outward and everything works perfectly. Something that can't be fixed though is the build plate size, at least not on the K1. Sitting at 220 by 220 by 250, it's on par with all the Ender 3s and comparable printers, at least on build size. I would have loved to have a larger build plate on the K1, and if that's a deal breaker for you, take a look at the K1 Max. It's got a 300 by 300 by 300, and that's a wonderful build size for a machine with these specs, and of course, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. In regards to loading filament, there's still some work to be done. Pushing the filament through the tube isn't an issue, but for some reason it's almost impossible for me to get the filament to go into the extruder properly. Wiggling the tube around works occasionally. I even tried printing a little add-on that fits over the end of the tube right up against the connector. It also works occasionally, but when none of that works, fortunately it's pretty easy to release the tube, push a little extra filament through and into the extruder, and then push the tube back into place. I also printed out these 270 degree hinges and swapped them out with my door hinges. This allows me to swing the door completely open, giving full access to the inside without feeling like I might break the door by pushing too hard. 
Another fix that I had to do recently just for me was to relocate my spool holder to the side since my new desk didn't allow for a rear mount. It's a pretty easy and sweet looking print. I'll have links for all the other prints I've shown in this video along with the side mount, the tube fix, the hinges. They'll all be down below. Advertising. The Creality Cloud includes the Creality Print Slicer and the mobile app. Both allow you to send prints to your printer remotely. And while that's great, and nowadays it's kind of expected, the whole thing is still to this day overloaded with advertising. And on top of that, they want you to buy the premium version that supposedly gives you priority slicing in the cloud, faster downloads, and a few other perks. Fortunately, it comes with a year free, but I'm kind of scared to think about what it's going to be like when that goes away. For instance, opening the slicer on my computer, the first thing I see is a pop-up showing me a bunch of models I can buy. Also, the advanced settings in the slicer aren't all that obvious, but they're available on the right under Parameter Config and then under the Edit button. The mobile app goes way further with the advertising, though. Occasionally, I get a five-second ad before I'm even allowed to get into the app. And guess what's the first thing I see when the app finally opens? My printer? My print information? No. A full-on marketplace where I can buy prints and Creality products and more. Even more frustrating is that you have to buy coins to spend on the prints as if I'm in some microtransactional mobile game. This wasn't a video game. I know there's a large consumer market for that sort of thing, but I really don't think it works in the 3D printing space. Okay, all that aside, I don't want you thinking I hate the Creality K1. Actually, I don't. I really like it a lot. It's dependable, it's easy to use, it's easy to get started on, and it is fast. I found myself going to it a lot for single color prints over my other machines just because it works so well. Then there's the price tag of $599. With the recent bamboo price drop on the P1P to 599 giving you the ability to upgrade to color one day with the AMS, well, it just made the choice a little more difficult to make for the K1. At least, until recently. As I was working on this video, imagine my surprise when I got an email saying that Creality had decided to drop the price of the K1 to $499. Now we're talking. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. I know the price is still up there for most beginners and weekend hobbyists, but for the speed and the reliability, it's a great price for a great machine. If you can get around the ads and focus just on the printer itself, it's an amazing machine for just about anybody. What do you think? Is the Creality K1 Speedy 3D printer worth taking a look at? I've had it for quite some time now, and while I may not use it every single day, I do keep a spool loaded up and ready to go for a lot of my single color prints. And I still stand by what I said. It's fast and dependable. Also, I've been trying different nozzle sizes, and except for dialing in the 0.2 millimeter nozzle, well, the K1 is printing 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and even one millimeter without any issues. If you have a K1 or maybe a K1 Max, what do you think? Would you recommend it? Let us all know in the comments. And let's keep helping each other out in the lab so we can all learn, create, and amaze.